Crossroads Media. Unreal. Isn't that the best way to describe this one? Unreal. Didn't deserve it. Grinded it out. Found a way. Impressive. Before we talk about it more, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up button as well. I greatly appreciate all the support. I want to know down below in the comment section, what stood out to you in this win on the road, second half of a back-to-back -back in Miami? What was eye-popping to you the most? And real quickly, if you're looking to buy tickets to go to any NBA, NHL, NFL game, you can use promo code BRODES at SeatGeek's checkout page for $20 off. It's a no-brainer. It eliminates those fees. Don't worry about it. Throw it towards parking. You're basically having a $20 bill dangled in front of your face right now. Take it right from me. Promo code BRODES, SeatGeek's checkout. TikTok at BRODES Media. Toss me a follow there, too. With that, let's get to it. Enjoy the show. That's a damn good win. That is a ridiculously strong win. When you think about the circumstances, second half of a back-to-back. -back. Oh, by the way, you're traveling from Philadelphia to Miami. You played a heated rival, a team you despise, and you want to spit in their face every time you see it. And I know they hate Miami, too. When I said that, and I mentioned the spitting, I was referencing Boston. So you play with that type of fire and that type of pure emotional hatred towards one organization. It's hard to follow that up the next night, even if it is against Jimmy Butler and some familiar faces in Kyle Lowry, and he won't shut the fuck up. Oh, my Lord. It's like every single damn time something happens out there, he's crying like the softest human in the association I've ever seen in my damn life, and that's saying a lot considering the complainers that lived in the NBA team. Time. I mean, it's absolutely a joke the way that I see him bitch over and over again. How about you make some buckets, Kyle? How about you don't suck out there on the floor? Jimmy Butler made one basket all night. Kyle Lowry shot the ball horrendously and he sucked. How about you focus on just hitting your shots instead of looking and, and feeling to rip apart the zebras and assuming they're the reason and there's the correlation behind you not locking in and closing out a game that you should have won. Let's be realistic. The 76ers should not have won that basketball game, but it tells you a lot about Joel Embiid in the second half. Look, you don't have Matisse Thibel entering this one, so it only makes you even more shorthanded than you were before. Joel Embiid was questionable, so you didn't even know if you'd have the big man. If I'm going to be be honest I didn't know if he would go or not I didn't think that he would just based off of last night and a back-to-back -back. you just give him a day off but then I remembered oh wait this is a new Joel Embiid era okay this is a new determined Joel Embiid which is scary because we thought that he was prior yeah let's multiply it by six billion that's this new version of Joel Embiid and he responded with his poor effort in the first by one mocking it on the post game which I thought was hysterical and then two wah excuse me what was that fourth quarter what was that second half Yurtsevin's out there going shit shit when the face-up game's happening and in transition he's flying full speed and in transition he's playing the face-up game and it was his shots were falling and he was knocking down his jumpers Yurtsevin's going fuck this is gonna be a tough day at the office and what do you know now Joel Embiid had help tonight which was awesome whether it was Seth Curry shots bailing out the Sixers at some times or it was Tobias Harris in that first quarter or that first half excuse me he had three for three from deep tonight all right he shot the ball nine of 13 for his 22 points let's not overshadow Tobias Harris's impact without him keeping you involved early on and this was talked about post game Game, then uh, you, you're not there. You're not there. It took everyone who stepped up today, even though Maxi on the box score doesn't scream anything powerful, whether it was a block that lit my world on fire. Wow! I was going nuts watching a little bit of Tyrese Maxi out by the perimeter, which put a smile, I'm sure, on a lot of our faces. So, yeah, I mean, guys had their role and guys had their impact for sure. 
defensively as the game went on, they really clamped down. And I just think a team, a good team, I'm not going to tell you they're like this amazing elite team. They're clearly missing something. But they're a good team. They're a good team, all right? Uh, They're not going to win it all as they're constructed right now. But they are a good team the way that they are playing. Sometimes... You scratch your head afterwards, and you wonder, how did it happen? I don't know. It was a gutsy performance. When things got tough and it could have went the other way, they just held on. They kept themselves in reach. Buckets were made enough to make you feel, hold on a second, if we just lock in here defensively and make a couple shots on the offensive side, we'll be all right. And then I watched Niang. Minivan, wide open, nothing but net, turns around and starts chirping at everybody on the bench because he doesn't shut up because he's a spark. He's an energizer bunny, and he's annoying to play against, I'm sure, because all I see him do out there is yap, whether it's to somebody on the other team, whether it's a bench, whether he's firing up his own team by looking at the bench and screaming at him, whether it's looking at the crowd looking for a reaction. That's Niang, and guess what? When he has the shots falling to support it on that given night, he's probably someone you just want to clock in the mouth and scream in his face to shut up. He was very important. Some big three-pointers were made. And then, of course, Joel Embiid. Give me the basketball. I'll grab what I need to grab inside that paint area and bank it off the glass with you. However you need me to score. Oh, yeah, 32 points. 32 again. Again. Don't take this for granted. Relax and enjoy. Sure, a lot of playoff football was on today. So I'm properly going to say correctly that this somewhat flew under the radar. More of a box score watch. More of a casual flip back and forth. Although Tom Brady not being on the Patriots anymore. Yeah, I think Patriots fans are thinking life without Tom Brady is significantly different than I thought after watching Mac Jones and some of this defensive play benefit us in the regular season. All right, look, my point is, I don't want to not give this win credit and Joel B credit because it slips behind Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals and the Eagles playing tomorrow as well. Joel Embiid helped carry this team. And you know what a common theme is? It starts with him, and everybody's fully aware of that and acknowledges that. But there's a lot of times now where I'm using the cliche answer of, it was a team win. Let's roll through who played a role and had a significant spark to the outcome. I already mentioned Niang. Hell, you got Charles, I almost said Charles Bassey, excuse me, Charlie Brown logging in double-digit minutes, which uh, if you told me before the season began, some dude named Charlie Brown would be rocking and rolling for you and and bringing juice, I'd probably laugh in your face and go, I don't even know who that is and make a joke to the damn cartoon. Joel Embiid, Seth Curry, Niang, Tobias, the defensive unit. Amazing. I'm really proud of of the way that they did this. And I'm not going to go too far with it and make this win something it's not over 82 games. We break this down all the time, right? There'll be bad losses in 82 games. There'll be good wins in 82 games. There'll be ones that feel way more important than others. But in the grand scheme of things, 82 games, you can kind of like layer it out or map it out and look at it throughout. You can... put it in segments, and put it almost in tiers of what it would look like through 82. And this falls in one of those categories of it feels more powerful than just your normal win. And when you put together nine of your last 10, that's extremely hard to do. And I got to give them credit for it. But I don't want to give them an, an, an obnoxiously insane, insane round of applause where I'm maybe giving them a standing ovation at the end of a big play in Broadway and you're in New York City and there's cheers going on. I don't want to bring it to that level of intensity, but I do want to give it a bigger label than just a nice win, right? It's somewhere in between that. And when you look at Charlotte and when we talked about it and I claimed, I don't want to 
overreact and make this seem like it's something more than it is. I need to see the finishing touches of this weekend before we really know. It's sort of like I, I had John Anik on UFC play-by-play announcer. You should check that out on one of my schmoozed episodes that was uploaded earlier this week. When you think about a loss for a fighter, It's more about what the next fight is like that tells you about the original fight. Well, with Charlotte, that was the original fight. And I didn't anticipate them winning both games. Second half of a back-to-back, you travel. Then you lose Matisse Thibel on that hard fall. And oh, by the way, while there were some troubling moments, the defense as a team core definitely held their own there and was a serious part to their win. You could talk about down-the-stretch impactful plays that all started on their fight on the defensive side of the floor, and that can't go unnoticed. I didn't anticipate them winning both of these games, though, if I'm going to be a 1,000% honest with you. Very happy that they did, and we're going to kind of keep this one short today. We do have some text messages to get to. I just want to let you know, in, in general, I, I don't plan on going insanely long. I do need to tell you about D. Simone Jewelers, my jewelers, of course. I got my... In, engagement ring, my fiance's engagement ring, if I could speak properly, that would be great. My friends at Simone Jewelers, they're the greatest. I got my fiance's engagement ring from them, and I keep going back. Birthday, holidays, like Valentine's Day, the random Thursday, because I'm a nice guy. They're a family-owned business located in Haddonfield, New Jersey, previously in Jewelers Row, and they work with you to get the best design at the most reasonable price you will find in the market. What I love most about Simone Jewelers is when you walk in those doors. You're not just some random individual. You're not Joe Smith, okay? You're not Natalie Smith. You are De Simone. You are part of them. We're a community here in Philadelphia sports. We're passionate about our teams. That's how they feel about De Simone Jeweler and what they can provide for you. There's so much connection involved in what you're purchasing because of the education that they give you and that home vibe that you can't have in any other place. They provide custom jewelry, design jewelry, repairs, appraisals, and so much more. If you tell them that Broad sent you, they will hook you up. No doubt about it. They have a website as well, dsimonejewelers.com. The link is in the description. Make sure you check that out. All right, let's go to the text board here, the Anytime Hotline, 856-442-9805. It's a text message board. It's a text board. And of course, you can call in and leave your voicemail as well. I like to kind of go back and forth on what we're going to be utilizing throughout the shows. Lately, it's been some text boards, but I love it all. So, It's just what I'm feeling when I sit down in this chair and I hit that record button. Just what I'm feeling that day. So there's no science behind it. Let's go to Anthony from Delaware. Broads, this team should not have won tonight. Good teams with great leadership earn victories when it's not ideal. Look how Lowry and Butler played. And then think about Embiid late, which was awesome. And Tobias Harris early. So so excited for this team right now. Yeah, perfectly said. You think of the better players on the Sixers, they cashed in, they made plays. You think of the Jimmy Butler and the Kyle Lowry, they fell flat on their face. And there was some reasonable thought on Jimmy Butler maybe having a weekday at the office. His first game back was... Last night, they're on the second half of a back-to-back as well. So they just played previously, and Jimmy Butler returned. There's adrenaline, right? There's a big kick in the face because you realize I'm back, and you're excited. Your emotions are very high. And then after a little bit of time, and I know it's only been one day, but there is a fair fatigue factor that plays in when you miss the amount of time that Jimmy Butler has with some of those injuries that have been nagging him along this season. And it seems it's kind of moving around this body. You never know. And I just always go back to, well, I will want Jimmy Butler over Tobias Harris 7 billion out of 7 billion times. But I do believe here in this city, if we were experiencing a Jimmy Butler season that they are right now, which is inability to get into the lineup and the unavailability of them, there would be a lot of complaints that I can't believe you spent max money X amount of dollars on an individual that's 30-something years old. What did you expect to happen? So I really feel that for this season specifically, if Jimmy Butler stays healthy and, and he helps you out, and by the 
the way, during the bubble season, his team did end up making an NBA Finals run, so I'm not going to bash it and act as if it's not a good decision to have Jimmy Butler there, and if you could bring him in when that max contract was offered to him, I would want Jimmy Butler on my team. Let's make that very clear and make sure that you are hearing that correctly. I just do know that for this season in particular, there'll probably be some outrage in that department for sure. Uh, Your players said, let's go. Your player said, follow my lead, right? And it's like a snowball effect. It starts with Joel, follow my lead. And then it starts with the next guy, follow my lead. And then the next guy follows their lead. And in this game, throughout spurts, it was just there. Although, I mean, I guess you can make the argument that on this night, it didn't start with Joel Embiid saying, follow my lead because he he was uh, atrocious offensively. But that's one thing to say about uh, Joel in general. You just see the internal growth as a leader. There have been times in years past where something like this would go down and it would just be a bad Joel Embiid night. He wouldn't finish with 32. It would automatically be over. Maybe shrug his shoulders, have his hands on his knees, and he'd be leaning over at the charity stripe. Now he looks confident saying, there's a lot of time left in this game. Do not give up. Believe in ourselves. Let's go execute our offense. Let's put the clamps down. Smack the damn floor. Let's take charges, put our hands in the cookie jar, and let's end up getting blocks out by the perimeter. Let's run out and make some shots and make them feel us and let them get on their heels so they go, "Uh uh-oh, they're coming our way. We need to stop the bleeding. Don't let them stop the bleeding and let's go. Right, but that wasn't what we got before previously because it takes time to learn how to do that. It takes time to understand the ups and downs. You need that personal experience. So it's, hey, I've been in this spot before. This is what I used to do. This is what I now have to do because I'm no longer a 23-year-old Joel Embiid. I'm in my late 20s and I'm here to take this organization and this outstanding city on a ride. So it's just more and more and more developmental awareness of the Joel Embiid experience. It really is. Because in years past, this is a loss. The game got away from you. It is what it is. Let's shake it off and move to the next one. And there's times where that happens. That's inevitable. You can't fight that. It's about limiting the amount of times that it happens. And uh, I just I just think I'm... I'm Really, really proud overall, the more and more it digests here, of what this team really accomplished today. Uh, Once again, I don't want to make it seem like they just won the NBA championship, as I was alluding to before, right? Let's find this middle ground. But it definitely goes into that tier of the one regular season when that feels a bit better. There's a statement towards it of, you thought we were going to collapse? You thought after the hot start and then we fell flat on our face because we weren't available due to COVID issues and they went to the West Coast and they played some tough teams? You thought after that we were going to be done? Ben Simmons thought for about a three-week stretch that they were going to win and him and Rich Paul were in the clear. And now you're seeing a totally different side of it. And now he's shitting himself. And there's probably a correlation with why Rich Paul and Dara Morey and the 76ers went out, got something to eat, had some dialogue about the updates, which there were no updates, of course. Thank you, Anthony, for texting into the show. This is from James. I have to admit, Broads, and I'm not sure... And I'm sure I'm not the only one who feels this way. But I'm starting to feel a connection with these group of players. It was hard to connect with the Ben Simmons problems to begin the year. It's different now. Do you feel the same way? Yeah, I do. I do. We're starting to learn who they are. We're starting to find roles. We're starting to see. We know what the minivan's about. We know what an Andre Drummond off the bench is like. When he's forced to play more, he stinks. When this is the layer. Why do I keep saying layer? The level. You know what it is? (laughs) I, I, I know exactly what it is. I'm starting to do some more stuff on Photoshop and I'm constantly adding layers right now, nonsense stop. So even when I'm saying that in this conversation, I can see it in my brain, Photoshop, the right side, and me hitting things on my iPad to add the layer. I I don't know. I don't know. I think that's where I'm getting it from. I could just be talking nonsense. With 
Andre Drummond, you know the level. You know Max, even though there's sort of a, a ride for him. You, you know what he's all about. You expect the ride, but you know there's nights where he can give you five threes. He can give you 29 points in a game if you need it in, 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 a, in, a, in a nice second half. You know he can run the offense and give you a handful of assists if need be. It's in there, and it's not rare. You'd like it to be more consistent, but it's not rare. The only thing I guess is somewhat of a toss-up is the Danny Green experience. And I know nobody's going to want to hear this, but the starting five of Maxi, Curry, Danny Green, Tobias, and Joel Embiid for 100 possessions have a plus 11 rating in terms of their offensive production and their, their production in general is plus 11 rating, right? So that values everything as a whole. Well, the lack of offensive production is why I bring this up. Seth Curry, Tyrese Maxey, Matisse Thibel, Tobias, and Joel Embiid for 100 possessions over 200 minutes worth of data is minus 11. And there's some decimal points on the end of those. But moral of the story is there's a huge difference between plus 11 and minus 11 for their rating out there as a starting five. And I'm a little shocked by those numbers. It is something that stands out to me with a little bit of an eyebrow raise because Danny Green has not been very beneficial to them in terms of execution. And there's been some really ugly, tough moments. That's another player they were missing, of course, that I haven't even mentioned yet. But it was Matisse Thibel and Danny Green, which are very important pieces. That's your starter and your backup in that position so not having those players to lean on at all just in terms of bodies even if they're not having their perfect brand of basketball that night just for the pure form of having players to play that only adds more to the context of this win but with Danny Green there's something to it There's something to him starting just with spacing on the floor and how much that gives others to work with is sort of what it tells me when I see those numbers. So it's not surprising because I knew that, but it is a little surprising because it makes it seem like Danny Green is making that much more of an impact. But maybe that tells you the real problem with Matisse Thibault's offense, you know? Maybe it's just telling you the other side, which is, oh man, guys are disrespecting him to the nth degree. But I digress. To get back to what James was talking about and what he's saying, I agree completely with the whole, you know, I feel connected night to night. And to begin the year, you knew you were such in a weird spot that you you lost that, right? Right from the beginning, there was never that pure juice that we're used to to start a sixer season. It felt black clouds surrounding your body. Right now, it doesn't feel that way. It doesn't. And it's because we're watching, maybe, right now, arguably, the best player in the NBA. Now, of course, LeBron is the best player in terms of what he's done in his career. And LeBron's still a dog right now at his age, which is mind-blowing and sensational. There's no reason to hate this individual. He's a special player to watch night in and night out. And I still get amazed by LeBron James. But Joel Embiid is in the category of LeBron, Kevin Durant, Steph Curry. So because we're tied to him, does that make it easier to to get more into the other players? Yeah, probably, probably. But I do feel more of a connection. Uh, there's no doubt. We'll take one more here. Chima from Maryland. What an awesome win on a back-to-back. It's looking like the success we had on the seven-game win streak was not just because we were playing weak teams. We are clicking now like we did in our first 10 games of the season, and of course Embiid is the straight-up reason. In this game, he struggled offensively to start, but he wasn't just settling. He hustled and played defense. You're right, real quick, Chima, before I continue on your text, that play where he was on the ground and three defenders were in his face and he's throwing elbows and they're trying to get a timeout caught, and there's players waiting around for a three-pointer. I thought maybe he'd be able to kick it out from laying on the ground to a wide open three but just Joel Embiid that's two plays now in the last two nights where it's full throttle full speed diving on the floor for loose balls and he does it all the time don't get me wrong unless maybe that was the Charlotte game that might have been the Charlotte game but regardless the the fact that he's laying out hustle plays are even more highlighted from Joel Embiid uh, it's it's crazy. So to continue with Shima's text, thankfully, Toby, Curry, Drummond, Maxi, Niang all helped out until he was able to get into his rhythm in the second half. It was great to see Toby get 
back-to-back good efficient as well. Well, thank you so much, Shima. Oh, there's more. Hold on. With Oh, well, well, it continues. I see. It cut off a little bit. With Tobias, good efficient Tobias games without too much ISO. And he was hitting wide open threes. And the team defense was fantastic. Of course, anchored by Embiid. Embiid is just so special. I love how he closed out the fourth quarter. I'm not going to lie. I love Matisse Thibel, but this team played good defense tonight. And yeah, I mean, look. And the, the closing lineup that he had out there. How that closing lineup had five guys that were able to score and hit threes. Well, yeah, definitely. There is something to be said about having that aspect out there on the floor. Uh, but I'm right there with you. Just I can tell in your text message and in your tone and the usage of exclamation points, I could feel the same exact vibe that I have right now. And quite frankly, uh, based off of when the time this is going to be released and knowing the Eagles are coming up here in, in just hours away, it tells you a lot for me to think, you know what, this win is deserving to still have that, you know, long-form conversation on them because Eagles football is going to take away the storylines rather quickly. And uh, th- this team was worth it tonight because Joel Embiid in the fourth quarter did Joel Embiid things. And I always at times question closing at the center position. Now, it's obvious he needed help to rely on some of his teammates, and that's fair. You need that type of spacing. And that's something that's lethal for some of these players, right? Because if you're going to bring double teams towards Joel and he can kick out and Niang can shoot it and Seth can shoot it and they're feeling it and Tobias is in rhythm taking his shots well that's a dangerous thing now you got to pick your poison and you never want your be- your best opponent that you're playing against the other team's best player to beat you you'll live with Niang and Curry and fall asleep a little easier at night if that's the case there's a major difference with that and it was It was something that made me proud watching this team tonight. Definitely did. So with that being said, I am going to shut things down here. Uh, I want to thank everybody so much for hanging out with me today, for texting in. And yeah, that's kind of where we're on things here. Go Birds! Go Birds! Go Birds! And with that being said, thank you all so much, and I will see you next time.